I should probably have grabbed a napkin and I did it. Um, so I decided it was time to call the sheriff's department. I knew something wasn't right. Let me, let me note on when I went into the home, I found my mom's purse. Okay. Beside her bed. I found her wallet. I found her ID. There was cash in there. Her pistol was outside. So all the things that are my mom are at home. I mean, her car's there. Her ID's there. So where your head goes is you want to make it the most logical explanation possible. And, and you want it to be that maybe she just decided to go. You know? Maybe, maybe she took off. But none of those dots connect. You know, we've been searching every which way. And come Saturday, the sheriff's department, volunteer firefighters, and family came down and we did do a search behind her home. Okay. We were scheduled to have some dogs come out to help look for my mom. Um, I believe they were, you know, live body dogs, uh, cadaver dogs. I'm sorry. I don't know the technicalities on that. Um, but they were planned. And then after the search, it was decided that most likely my mom was not on her property. And we did not need the dogs. I apologize, you guys. I'm going to be a stop mess right now. And my nose ring is going to be all crazy. And that's fine. I'm glad this hopefully will get shared so many times. I need this shared so many times. So raw me is what you get. Um, we did the search and they decided no on the dogs. Well, we wanted to be patient, you know, and wait. And we did. And I made a post on Facebook. And as far as we know, hopefully that's circulating something good. Something good is coming of that. Um... But it's only went that far. And I really, truly appreciate the radio stations that have put my mom's information out there. Because I need this to be clear that my mom did not leave because she wanted to. We don't, my family does not feel that at all in their hearts, okay? Um, it just, it just, it doesn't make sense. So we've, we've all, it's almost like conducted our own little searches. Um, you know, we've continued to go out and do that. And we don't know what we're doing we don't know how to get the media's attention on this. We don't know how to get dogs here. We've been trying and we haven't gotten anything back. I know that people go missing every day and all of them are so important to somebody. And I'm so happy to see media coverage on these people. But where's the media coverage on her? She's important too. I want to know why we can't have dogs out because there's not a crime scene to look for her. Why aren't dogs being brought out to her property at least? Something's happened to my mom. People don't just disappear. They don't. She's not Houdini and <laughs> Houdini didn't even disappear. So I just, I just need all your guys' help because this woman is very, very loved and very, very, very missed by many people. And I need you to share this information. If you know of any volunteer groups that would be willing to just bring dogs down and look for my mom, I would be forever grateful. If you know anybody who works in the media, news stations that can get my mom's face out there more, please help us. Please help me. Please help her. She deserves to be home. I've had an opportunity to really speak with our sheriff's department. Um, so I, I definitely need everyone to understand and know this is really big. That my family and I wholeheartedly 100% are standing behind um, Sheriff Knox and Benton County Police Department. Um, I think that they're doing absolutely wonderful and they're doing everything they can. Um, please don't think that they're not exhausting every avenue. Please don't think that every stone is, is not being turned because it is um this is not um this is not csi this is not a tv show and i really wish it were because even on the id channel i'm watching the first 48 you have to solve that crime in the first 48 hours and really that's not how it works you know this this is real life um 
So please understand also that there are some questions that we don't have the answers to that we question too. Um, and, and know that most likely the police are asking the same questions that we are. Um, so the, the questions are wonderful and, and have those. And if we can answer your questions, absolutely we will. They are working tirelessly. So I do want to say, like, please don't feel like the Sheriff's Department is not doing their job. They are doing the job. And part of doing the job is, is to, um, the public is not supposed to know everything that's going on. Um, we don't know everything that's going on. No. Um, it would jeopardize the investigation too much. Law enforcement, and I do believe that they are doing everything they can. I do believe they're staying on top of her case. I do, um, I text and bother, you know, and call the sheriff um, every so often, about 10 to 14 days, uh, we speak. And he's always so kind. Um, Benton County, I, I really do have to say they've, they've, they've been really kind. Um, and of course, I'm pushy and I'm gonna keep pushing. It's not gonna stop until she's home. And I don't think any of us hopefully will stop until she's home. So please don't stop sharing her information. Um, she's such a bubbly personality. I mean, my mom, when she walks into the room, the whole room lights up. Her smile lights up the world. And her laugh is just infectious. Infectious. And mom, if you happen to be out there, know that I miss you. I miss everything, everything about you. I miss the way you laugh. I miss the way you complain about your hair. I miss the way that, the way your voice changes when you talk to my son. And this whole other woman comes out and it's just so beautiful to see that bond between you and my boy. I miss you being here for all the firsts because baby Houston is <laughs> amazing. Mommy, I miss you. We all do. Even though nobody else is here with me uh, to do an update for her, we all miss her. We all miss you. It has been 305 days it has been 305 days since I've heard her voice I wrote a list of reasons why we need to start asking the police what's going on and what's happening in Benton County Missouri so from day one I was told I wasn't allowed to go to the police or go to the media, whether that was radio, Facebook, um, or um, radio, Facebook, um, news outlets, um, anything. They asked us not to do that and not to ask for help finding her um, because they didn't want to scare anybody away. And I waited two days and I just didn't feel like it was right that I wasn't asking for help. And so I did it anyways and some family got upset that I posted her on Facebook. And um, it's understandable because law enforcement had asked us not to and I went behind what they had asked us to do and did it anyways. And, um, let me go ahead and roll my windows up. And um, I had some people upset with me and I, I understand that. So um, when they got there, I mean, from the get-go, you know, I knew something was really wrong and I knew who they needed to go question and I've been scared to say. They said that I could get in trouble for slander. <laughs> but my mom came to me two weeks before she disappeared and she told me all kinds of stuff <laughs> for hours and then she left and it really messed me up. I didn't talk to anybody about it for about five days <laughs> because I just couldn't comprehend what was happening and she was calling me and checking in. <laughs> And so I told him, you need to go question this person right now. You need to go down there right now. They know that I called you and they've got her somewhere. They've done something to her. And they told me to calm down. You don't know that that's what happened. You don't know that that's what happened. Start from the beginning and tell me from the beginning. And so I did. And there was so much at that point. So many times I would had to go to her house or her and I had discussions. I would had to sit this person down and tell them you have no boundaries. She's so hard to... Uh, she doesn't do confrontation well and so she called me and said please come over and I did 
and to have to sit them down and tell someone you have no boundaries. There should be no reason. Okay, <clears throat> I'm really sorry my phone got too hot. Um, so hopefully that doesn't happen again. Um, so, all right, where I left off was um, they told me to calm down and repeat everything, and so I did. Um, and when they got there, I mean, when I when I went to her home, and I by the time I got in her house, I did touch things, but I mean, immediately what was going through my head was don't touch anything, don't touch anything, don't touch anything, you know, barely touch things. Um, and they weren't wearing gloves. Um, and so anyways, the, one of the deputies had pulled me to the side and I wrote everything down in absolute detail and kept telling them they needed to go question them. So they walked around or whatever. Um, I didn't know that like on a podcast I had mentioned her pistol and I didn't know that I wasn't, um, I didn't, I didn't mean to let anything out. I got a call from Sheriff Knox, um, about that and told me that I was ruining her case by talking about it, about any of it. <laughs> um, and I was gonna mess things up, which doesn't make sense because before that I was told he'd probably have to do it again um, in order to get caught. <laughs> um, so anyways, we, we walked around or whatever and it was about five hours, six hours that I was there. And when I was able to leave, that's when deputies were down questioning the neighbors and the specific neighbor I talked about was not there and I thought well that's funny and come to find out you know it took the police knocking on their door for them to come to the door and they've like we've been out here knocking and um, you know trying to talk to you what have you been doing and they were taking a nap now you're my mom's only friend who forced her to go places. I want everybody to re be reminded of that. My mom told me she felt like something was a community effort. It was a community effort not to let her car be fixed in time. Um, and I don't care if I sound crazy. I don't care anymore. Like this shit has to, I'm so sorry, this stuff has to get out. I haven't, I've been holding a lot in. So when we did the, the foot search, you know, I kept saying we need dogs or whatever. And that was going to be scheduled for Saturday because they came out and did the initial investigation starting that on Friday. And so Saturday we did a foot search with about 25 people or so. We only searched about three to four miles behind her home and like a search, like a, like a U-turn and back to her property. That's it. There is Forbes land that is over 12,400 acres that, um, that butt up, that butt starts to butt up to her property. So all we did was search this small area, sorry, and then he went, Sheriff Knox said, we don't, we're going to call off the dogs. They, they rescheduled them for Sunday. We're going to call off the dogs. We don't believe that she disappeared from her home. Okay. But why would you think that? You know, um, because her purse was there, her ID was there, uh, her car was there. I mean, and then forensics didn't come for about two weeks to her property so it was a sitting duck they told me basically that you know I shouldn't have my hopes up and she's probably just gone um, I was told at one point, I, I, I called after two months, I called the sheriff's department back and said, listen, can I go to media yet? Can I go to, um, can I go to news outlets? I was told by a specific deputy, um, I'll have to ask, you know, my sergeant, but I'll call you back. Sorry, the tornado sirens, um, are going off right now. My phone's getting hot again. Um, so hopefully it doesn't shut off. Um, they'd have to ask their sergeant. Um, and get back to me and they called me back and said no you still do not need to go to the media and I asked why and they said we cannot you know tell you what to do that's what this specific person said I cannot tell you what to do hold on a minute guys I know that's so loud I cannot tell you what to do whether to go or not to go to the media but they do not want false leads to be brought in and they do not want to scare off the possible you know who possibly did this Okay, but how are you going to get leads to come in if we don't get the word out? On another note, 
when it comes to a missing person, even if it's no foul play suspected, there aren't many of them that I have seen where they're not releasing where they were last publicly seen, who they were last publicly seen with, what the vehicle they were in, what they were wearing. I have not been given this information. I have not been given anything um, at all whatsoever. I have been begging. I have been pleading. Um, it's been a little over a week or so the last time that I spoke with the lead detective and I was highly upset. And I said, it's time for me to bring the truth to the light because there's so much more going on in Benton County. But right now my focus is my mom. Um, so it took time for them to think that she might possibly be in danger. They just kept saying she just disappeared and were like, she wouldn't do that. She wouldn't do that. Um, but that didn't matter. And they knew she was without her medication. So why wasn't she an endangered missing person? And I was also told that that would not change how... Um, they are doing their investigation if she was endangered, which she should have been. She was without medications that she needed. Um, you know, uh, and let's see, man. Um, so they won't give any information. The, the dollar general, um, that, uh, in the beginning, because there's so many leads that haven't been followed up on, multiple people who have come to us with information, and we m we make sure to pass that on immediately. And then come to find out, they'll contact us again later and say, hey, they didn't touch base with us. They haven't done an interview. Um, I have been told by the lead detective that they have done about 60 interviews. Okay, so when it comes to Suzanne Morphew's case, okay, and I know it's a different case, but over the span of a year, they did over 400 interviews, even across state lines. I have no air in my car right now, so sorry. I look like a hot, sweaty mess, and I know it. Things like that happen all the time, so I'm really sorry. Their time is hopefully, fingers crossed, a charm. All right, so I don't know if I left off about where the dogs were. Um, you know, um, and two months in, when I asked about going to the media, that's when I started calling. I called um, the FBI. I called Kansas City. I called Springfield. I called Missouri State Highway Patrol. I called the governor's office, the senator. I called the attorney general, and I was told by the attorney general's office, sorry, we don't deal with anything like that, which at the time, I didn't know anything still kind of don't know if I'm honest about the attorney general. Um, so I felt stupid because I mean, people had told me to go speak, you know, talk to the attorney general and people still do. And they find that odd that I was told that they don't deal with this kind of thing. Um, cause I needed help. I wanted help. I, I knew something was really wrong. Like, why are we being told to be quiet about this? You know, if, if you're guessing that she's just gone and sh it's going to have to happen again in order for them to be caught, why am I being quiet about trying to find her? It doesn't make any sense. And, you know, we were all um, saying that she didn't disappear on her own. She wouldn't leave her kids. She wouldn't leave her grandkids, which is true. Um, my mom, you know, before, if my mom needed a weekend away, she had four freaking kids. So she would let her husband know where she was going and she would take a weekend away. That is a normal thing to do if you need that time for you. But she always told somebody where she was going. Um, so her not telling anybody, her phone, her home phone, starting to go straight to voicemail is really odd. Um, and that started the day after Mother's Day. Um, I started going straight to voicemail and when I text her second phone because she has two phones Okay, she has a T-Mobile for a uh, T-Mobile phone That's an iPhone and then she had a Verizon phone Which was a prepaid phone because in Edwards down there you have really bad cellular service and T-Mobile isn't the best in that area It's pretty bad, but Verizon if you go to certain spots you could get at her property service um, This person had taken over that phone this person had told her I have photos of your brand new grandson because I kept sending my mom pictures and wondering why like why aren't you trying to interact with my baby? Like why aren't you trying to interact with me? You know that's your grandbaby. She wasn't allowed to be at the hospital and we knew that um and when she showed up to my house, she said, I, I knew, and I was told, like, um, you know, I've got the pictures of your baby, but I'm not going to show them to your grandbaby. Um, and if you don't understand manipulation, if you don't understand vulnerability um, and being in a vulnerable place, because my mom was a vulnerable person. My mom was naive to people. My mom just, love was the answer to everything, and she wanted to be friends with everybody, and she wanted to help everybody, even when she needed help herself. Um, she just continued to give, even when her cup was empty. And if you don't understand manipulation and people who are good at finding victims, um, you won't understand where her head was. And at the same time, when she came to my house, I, I, I still, I don't know. She, I think she was doing it to protect me. Um, my mom is hard headed. I think she had the idea that she was, you know, this is it. This is the time I'm going to put my foot down. Cause like I said, my mom's non-confrontational. Um, I don't know. You know, I, I, I try not to hold guilt because I, I just feel like I, I wish, I wish, I don't know. I don't know what I wish I would have done. Like physically picked her up and like put her in my son's room, lock the door. Like you aren't leaving, stay in the tower. You know, you can't <laughs> do that. I wanted to, but I didn't. I let her go. Um, and I really regret that now. Um, and so on that note, with these two cell phones, what is going on with the phones and the information on the phones? What's going on with that? Um, there's got to be something. It has been a year. I've been told, you know, it's got to be passed up the ladder to get the pings, to get information. Okay, that's fine. 
Has anything come of that? You know, I, I didn't start. There are things, of course, that I cannot speak on, um, and I know that. Um, but with the phone pings, information with the phones, where is that? What's going on with that? What's happening there? Well, Kelsey, what, what do you want us to look into? I don't know everything. You're the police. I'm not understanding why you're coming to me. I'm like, well, what do you want us to do? I want you to do your job. That's what I want you to do. I want you to find some answers. We've come to this day and there are more questions than answers. The person that I believe in my heart that did this to my mother for a multitude of reasons, I have so much, so much evidence. And of course, you know, it's the, his word against her word. I am not here for anything but the truth. And my mom, I have no reason to lie. He has every reason to lie about everything. So he had a grandfather that he lived with in Duroc Bay. That grandfather was sweet on my mom. He would bake her pies, she'd make him dinner, things like that. He'd call up there, he'd check on her at the house. Two weeks after my mom disappears, his grandfather passes away. Not from old age, but from a fall. His back was broken in half, in half. And it wasn't just in one day that he goes to the hospital and passes away. No, he was left on the floor for three days. Three, three days. And then a family member called and said, you know, a neighbor and said, listen, you've got to go check on him. I, I can't get him um, and see, you know, how he is. And they went in and he was on the floor and he passed away on the fourth day. They did no autopsy. They did nothing knowing my mom's case has been opened. Okay. Knowing that I've been saying this person, this person, this person, like look in this direction. Like what is going on here? Have you done a search of their home? Have you done anything? I mean, crazy things. This person was doing really weird stuff at this property, booby trapping the house, doing different things like that. Why would you do that if you didn't have a guilty conscience? doesn't make any sense. He did all kinds of things to that house after his grandfather passed away, but nothing was done with it. And by the time I kind of had somebody's ear, um, you know, he'd been cremated um, and couldn't be exhumed to do an autopsy because I really wanted to try to get his family justice also. Um, so the information with the Dollar General, especially because there is that conflict of Climax Springs and Edwards, or in Warsaw, I apologize, Climax Springs and Warsaw, okay? So the confirmation that we have is by speaking to the employees at the Dollar General in Warsaw personally, person to person. And we were told it was Warsaw, Missouri. We've been told that. Um, the only thing I've recently been told is my information is wrong, which makes no sense. I was told that by law enforcement. Now my information is wrong. And the thing is, is if there's anything going on, if they were, if they, if I felt like they were doing anything, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be doing this. But I need justice for my mom. My mom needs justice. That is the whole reason they're in a position you are to be there to help uphold the law. Put people behind bars that deserve to be behind bars. You can't take another person's life into your own hands and make a decision to end it. And that's what somebody did, and they're just letting them go. I can't tell you if there's one person because I know by you know the fact that the person involved. Everything needs to them. Everything needs to them. And yet somehow the cops don't have anything. And what blows my mind evidence. What's going on with evidence? How is everything circumstantial? And what I also don't understand is Susie Morphew's husband is behind bars. Her body has not been found. I understand they've done a bunch of interviews and things like that, but then you don't have any physical freaking evidence in front of you, right? And that guy's behind bars. So what's happening with my mom's case? Um, I have been told not to trust law enforcement on this case. I have been told that by other law enforcement. And if anybody wants to call me a liar or anything, I have learned to save everything. So at this point, I trust nobody. I can't even trust the people that are supposed to help me because something is wrong. Something's, something's going on, it just doesn't make sense. And then they'll tell people, Texas EquiSearch, you know, really wanted to come up. Well, we, you, know, you see, we don't have a place to start. How about her house? I don't know, that's a place to start. They have no answers for me. And I, I'll say, you know, like why did Benton County put uh, Climax Springs, not Warsaw. Well, I'm told by one group, by Missouri State Highway Patrol, I'm sorry, we can't answer for Benton County. And I'm told by Benton County, you can't answer for the Sheriff's Department. Nobody can answer anybody's questions. They want me to just go to the other person. They don't work together as a team like they should and discuss everything. There are so many times that there's been information that I know has been told to them more than once. And then they'll be like, well, I didn't have that in my notes. What do you mean you didn't have it in your notes? And then what they want me to do is start from the beginning and go all over it again. And don't get me wrong, I will do it. But now I have a whole year's worth. My family, um, you know, and, and close friends who are trying really hard to find mom have all of these different leads and information and some of them are true, you know, don't know, we don't know if they're true or not true because as far as I know, nothing's being done with a lot of it. A lot of it, I'm being told one thing and then you find out later that it's not happening. Um, there's been no press releases, which I don't understand. 
you know, and then Sheriff Knox getting on the interview two months in and saying, you're right, we're going to need the help from our citizens to find this woman. Really? Because I've been in the hot seat with my family because I'm ready to scream it from the mountaintops and ask where she is and what's going on. I felt cornered when I went and finally sat down with Sheriff Knox. He made sure he had two other deputies sitting back in a corner quietly. And you know, I, I, this isn't to try to make you feel intimidated. Well, how does it, how are you not supposed to feel intimidated? And all I could do was sit there and shake my head at what he had to say. There's a lot going on in Benton County, and again, my point is to find my mother. But there are murders that are being called suicides. People aren't lying about those. People are getting away with a lot and not getting in trouble. And you wonder why. I lived in Edwards for a little while, and I can honestly say that that will not happen ever again. Um, Driving to my house, of course, there are a lot of abandoned properties and things like that. Houses burned down out there. You can smell the dope cooking. Tell me how the sheriff's department doesn't notice that. You can see an abandoned house that's fallen in and dilapidated, and there's smoke rising from the chimney. There are evident... There are places that I was told um, she was forced to go to, and right after she disappeared, I started questioning around. Um... Come to find out that place was, I mean, it was true. It was, it was like everything I questioned about what she had told me two weeks before she disappeared was more confirmation than anything. And it's just the whole 2020 in hindsight really sucks. I don't know what I wish I would have done. I just wish I wouldn't have let her leave. Um, it's time for us to start knocking on Benton County's door and Missouri State Highway Patrol's door and asking them what's really going on with this case. Why aren't you answering me? Why aren't you answering any of my questions or giving me legitimate answers or an actual answer other than I'm sorry, it's an open investigation, I can't tell you anything. That makes absolutely no sense to me. You guys keep saying there's no foul play suspected. So you're not gonna tell me what she was seen on CCTV wearing, who she might've been with, what vehicle she was in? That's, that's weird. That is weird. It is weird to tell me I can't ask for help. They, I mean, he was, the Sheriff's Department was not happy that I was trying to get Texas EquiSearch, FBI, everybody else. And at one point I was told, you know, Missouri State Highway Patrol will get all the credit for this. So that's what you're worried about, credit? This has been a whole year building up, watching other things unfold in Benton County. Um, I'll never go back. I've got, you know, and, and I don't care anymore. If people want to think that I'm crazy, if you think I'm wrong for doing this, um, so be it. So be it. The truth needs to come to the light. And I don't know who's playing on what side in Benton County. I don't know who's dirty, who's not. I don't know why nothing is happening with her case, but there is definitely a reason nothing is happening with her case. And at this point, I want to know why. I am not going to be pushed around anymore. I am not going to be put on the back burner. I am not going to let her be forgotten. We cannot let her be forgotten. Please don't let my mom become a cold case. Please get anybody, everybody, news media outlets. She's been missing a year. Let's get I mean, national coverage. Get people to start asking these guys what's going on. If you knew you were not equipped in the beginning to look for my mom, why? Why did you wait until September to have Highway Patrol step in? Because I've been asking since July. I've been begging since July. I've been telling State Highway Patrol, actually the lead detective on this case, what do I need to do to be able to get you on? And then with Missouri State Highway Patrol, I said, what do I need to do to get the FBI involved? And at this point, I, I just, I trust... No one, and my head is, it is spinning. I've been really worried um, about people being upset with me by telling the truth, my truth, whether it's yours or not. It's my truth and I have the proof. <laughs> I have the proof to back me. You learn to record everything and keep note of everything. So everyone, what I can ask of you today is to please start asking Highway Patrol and Benton County Sheriff's Department what's going on in Benton County and where is Echo Lloyd? Why haven't you searched certain areas that we know should have been searched right from the get-go? Anywhere else probably would have sent a search team out to search certain areas, especially of the water that's around her home. I try not to get too excited, but... There it is. There's the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Why someone is not behind bars right now, I do not know. I do not understand. I don't know what you're doing to earn your paycheck when it comes to you being on my mom's case. 
And I apologize if that comes off as rude, but I am done. I am angry. I am fed up. I am fed up. I need people to hear me more now than ever. I am scared. I am scared, especially now coming out. There's a lot of things that are covered up down there. But first and foremost, my mom, I don't, not that other people don't matter, but my mom comes first in my book. So here we are, 11 months and one day of mom missing. I just want help finding her. That's all I want is her home and I'll do whatever it takes to bring her home. I love you guys. My family loves you. Thank you for your support. I really hope I've got everybody behind me on this. Let's work together and bring Echo home, please.